In this video, we're going to go over arrays and the three different types of arrays that you could potentially work with, depending on what exactly you're trying to draw. So what an array does is it makes a pattern of whatever geometry you've selected. And you can either do a rectangular pattern, a circular pattern, or a pattern along a path. So we're going to start off with a rectangular array. And we're just going to make a pattern of these little circles here. Now, the array tool for the keyboard shortcut, it's a little tricky just because there are those three options. And so that's why I tend to prefer the button. And if I click on this little drop down, I get the three different types we have listed. A rectangular, a path, and a polar, or a circular one is a polar. So I'm going to first do a rectangular array. And my first part of the prompt is to select the objects. So I'm just going to click on the circle that I want to make a pattern out of. And I can either hit enter or right click. And it'll start off with just a default rectangular pattern where it gives me four columns. So vertically across, I, I have one, two, three, four. And then rows, I have three rows going horizontally. Um, I can change those numbers if I want to. So if instead of four, I can click on that in this little menu up here and say that I want six. Once I click out of it, it'll update. And I'll say that, you know, I want seven rows. And it'll update. And if they're going in the direction I don't want to, I can just change these numbers to be negative. So right now, this is saying that between each one of these columns, so from the center of this circle to the center of this circle, is 16.3. If I change that number to 20 and then click out of it, it updates so now that they are spaced out more. And this total amount also updated automatically to say, well, if you have six columns with 20 in between, 20 units in between, then that's going to be a total of 100. If I change this total amount to, let's say, 95, then the space between, and I do have to just move my cursor outside of the toolbar for it to update visually. I'm not sure why, but I, that's what you have to do. It changed the space between. So I can only dictate one or the other of this, as well as the amount of columns, because these are going to be reliant on each other. So maybe I only know the space between each of them. Maybe I only know the total, but they're just going to be kind of reliant on one or the other. Same thing with my rows. And let's say I want my rows to go in the opposite direction. So if I type in negative 15 and move my cursor out of there, now it's flowing in the opposite direction, as well as my total then got updated. Levels would be dealing with three-dimensionally, so we don't want to look at the levels at all. But then that's how you would just change your kind of pattern. And I'll hit Escape to end the command. Now, an issue we tend to run into with arrays is that they work kind of like hatches. It makes sense, too, with the fact that the toolbar got changed a bit. So... All of these are kind of grouped together or joined together. So if I click on any one of these circles, it just opens up that array menu again, which may not be a bad thing. Maybe I do need to change something slightly. I could also use these grips to just manually update like my space between. Um, rather than typing it up here, I can just kind of pull. I could pull the overall amount change my number of columns um, if that's what I wanted to kind of work with but still maybe I'm done with an array and I just want to delete like these two circles here I have no way of just being able to click on those two circles and erase them as is so let me hit escape to end the command and that's where a tool like explode can help so with explode I can type in X enter I can click on the array itself, enter, and now it's no longer recognized as an array. Now it's recognized as individual circular pieces 
and I can window around different pieces and delete or erase them kind of as I need to or see fit. So that is one way that I can use the array tool along with explode to kind of just separate pieces. Now, another type of array that we use often, particularly when dealing with um, mechanical drawings and things for like gears and such, is the polar array, which is a circular pattern around a center point. So we almost always will have a circle drawn, whether that circle is just kind of as a reference point to start with, or it's going to actually be part of our finished drawing. So what I'll do is first I'll select my object, and then I'm going to just come to this little drop down and say that I want a polar array. So because I selected my object first, it skipped the step of select object, and it's saying, what do you want your center point to be? And so I'm just going to do it around the center of this circle, and it'll create a pattern of objects around that circle. It already has defined how many items, and I can change that. So I, instead of saying that I want six of these octagons total, I can say 10. And it'll update and it'll change the degrees between automatically for me. Um, by default, it will fill around a full 360 degrees, but we can change that if we want. So I can say that, you know, I only want it to put them 180 degrees. And then it will adjust the angle between to only fit 180 um, degrees around. So we can kind of play around with some of those numbers and features to get our array how we ever we want it to be. And once we're all done, we can either click on close or escape. Now, just like with a rectangular array, these are all grouped or connected together. So in order to separate them, if we ever need to or want to, we will have to explode them. So that's X, enter, click on the object you want, and then either right click or hit enter and now they are separate so if there is a reason that i maybe need to get rid of one and not the other ones i can do so so polar array is very common like i said when it comes to gears so for instance i have just kind of a one little tooth of a gear drawn here and i'll start a polar array by just coming up to click on the button the first step is to select my objects so i'll window around that object, enter, and then it wants a center point. So I'll just hover over the edge of this circle so it'll give me the snap of the center. And then I can adjust my number of items. So I'm going to say, you know, that I want 50 of them. Let's see if that gives me. That actually almost was perfect. I might even just use that anyway. Let's try 49. I didn't do these teeth at any particular size. So I just kind of drew one as a little example. But if this was something I was designing or making from a drawing, I would have an exact size. I'm just going to play around with this number to see if I can get it where this little edge meets perfectly there. Up, oh, almost so close so just because of the size i made them i don't think it'll i'll get it to fit perfectly but that's okay so i'll just move it to 47 we'll make it 47 of them and now i have all of these teeth on my gear hit escape and i can take this circle and delete it and now i have kind of my little some um, or i could even make you know like a saw blade kind of is more what it looks like than a gear necessarily but I was able to make a fairly complicated looking shape with only a few steps thanks to doing an array. The last type of array that exists that we don't use um, all too often is a path array. Now sometimes landscape architects will use a path array to just kind of put maybe stones or different features along a path. Um, but I have here a nice little curved line that I drew and a object that I want to just kind of make a copy of or a pattern of across that path. And so I'll come up 
to my options. I'll do a path array, select the object I want to array, and then either hit enter or right click, select the path or curve I want to draw it along, and then it'll fill in with items along that path. For a path array, I tend to just use this grip here to maneuver and adjust. So if I click on that grip, I can make it where things are a little bit tighter on the path or a little bit wider. Typically, if I'm using a path array, I don't have any technical specific purpose, like I might have if I was doing a polar array like this for a gear or for a saw blade. Um, with a path array, it's usually going to be something maybe a little bit more organic looking or for kind of more of an aesthetic than a descriptive purpose. And so then I feel more comfortable just using that grip to adjust it. And so those are three different types of arrays that you can use in drawings to just make patterns a little bit faster. Um, now there are some practices up on Canvas for you to do, which I encourage you use the array tools to practice um, making those drawings with. However, if you are struggling, please feel free to reach out and I can help you use the tools.